Hey, Mitch. Oh, hey, Ed. I was just brushing up on my alien literature. Did you know that this year marks the 45th anniversary of the show Mork and Mindy? Oh, yeah. I love that show. That's the best documentary series I've ever seen. Oh, no, no, no. It wasn't a documentary, you silly Australian. It was a show. Of... Yeah, it was a documentary, a documentary. You know, uh, it was the best documentary about life on Orc I've ever seen. Oh, and I suppose you are from Orc? Well, uh, I don't want to I don't want to give anything away, but uh, what do you uh, do? Fly around in a giant egg, too? Well, funny you should mention that. Oh, Shazbot. Let's just start the show. Hi, this is Ed Dollister. This is Mitch Halleck. Are you doing? I thought you were doing some mime. Are you are you making fun of my outfit? That's what you're doing. And well, that's what you look like. I couldn't place until now. It's like, oh, look, it's uh, Marceau Marceau. It is. Or, and uh, oh no, I'm I'm trapped in a box. Um, shield, and welcome to another now. exciting episode of Mitch and Ed's Excellent Adventure. I'm Ed Dollister. And I'm Mitch Halleck. And uh, we've got a great show for you today, looking at a classic sitcom from the 1970s. But before we begin, Mitch, if you are interested in finding out a little bit more about the show, how can you find out more? Oh, Ed, it is as easy as getting your own spin-off show after jumping on the Happy Days bandwagon. All you have to do is hit the subscribe button on the bottom, and you too will be subscribed to Mitch and Ed's Excellent Adventure YouTube show. And hit the notification bell so you'll be notified when we do another adventure. And hit the like button because that's what Mork would want you to do. So, Ed, let's talk about Alien. Yes, well, not Alien in the horrible sense but alien in the fun loving sense and we are going to be talking about the classic sitcom that ran from 1978 to 1982 mork and mindy now everyone i think is still familiar with mork and mindy one thing that was great about this show was the catchphrases there was the wild personality of robin williams but a lot of people don't realize as you alluded to with um uh, that mention of Happy Days, that it started off actually as a character from Happy Days in a one-off mm. episode called My Favorite Orkin. It did. I remember watching Happy Days. Yes. I was a big fan of the show. And it was a revelation because Robin Williams was just breaking onto the scene on TV. He's a stand-up comedian, you know, setting the world on fire all across the comedy clubs. But this was his big foray onto TV, and he just... You know, I think his performance on that episode made producer Gary Marshall say, hey, let's write a show around this kid. And that's what they did. But the funny thing is, Ed, did Mm -hmm. you know Robin Williams was not the first choice to play the alien Mork from Orc? He wasn't? No. No. There was, uh, I think it was comedian Buddy Hackett and uh, some other folks there, but they passed on the role. They didn't want it. In fact... Uh, I think there were some other guys that were doing the audition too, but basically when Robin Williams walked in the room, he stole the casting director's hearts because he didn't sit down normally, Ed. He put his head into the cushions and had his rump up in the air, and that's what got him the part. That's Just right. Like well, I got on this show. That, that's right. That's right. So, and yeah, I, we don't need to see your rump anymore, but thank you for keep offering on showing it every week with um, Robin Williams. Basically Gary, Gary Marshall uh, basically said, well, you know, Robin Williams was the only alien to audition for the show. And that's why he got the part. And um, he was amazing. Basically he came in, in the episode, my favorite organ, which was a take on my favorite Martian, the classic uh, 1960s uh, sitcom. Uh, yep. With Bill Bixby and Ray, Ray Walston. Ray Walston, that's right. And uh, basically, he comes in and freezes the Cunningham family, and it's up to the Fonz to try and stop, uh, stop Mork from uh, yeah. you know taking over the world, basically. Well, and Rich, Richie, Richie's awake doing it because it's uh, Richie sees what's going on. It's he does just... at the end, and then all of a sudden, you find out it's actually all they they have a sort of a sort of a thumb off, you know, which yeah, is really yeah. cool. And of course the Fonz prevails. He wakes up. It's all a dream. And then at the very end, 
um there's a, a you know a visitor um who knocks at the door and it's actually mork but it's not really mork it's just yeah. someone and everyone gets freaked out it was that sort of you know was it real or wasn't it was real? it real or was it and it was such a huge response as you said that they decided yeah. to um take a spin off and the, the reason that they brought mork on to happy days was this was in 1977 and they were trying to somehow how could they tie in to a little bit of that star wars everybody know, wanted um, that Star Wars. exactly going. they did yeah. they wanted a bit of that um sort of popularity as well so that's why yeah. they brought in the alien and it worked really well and a year later came mork and mindy mork and mindy that's right do, 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 set, with that set in boulder colorado yes boulder, and i colorado. always wanted i always wanted the jeep that they drove around in and i love the house which yep. is still which is still there. And did you know that house also featured in one of my all time favorite sitcoms, Perfect Strangers? So in the final season, that was uh, really I yeah. Didn't it was where they it was the I, house that they were renovating. Let's not, oh, I, I, could, I, I could talk for hours on Perfect Strangers. Oh no, well, maybe we'll do that some other time. Yeah. Featuring Connecticut's own Mark Lynn Baker. I know, right up the street. But uh, I uh, I remember opening credits of that show because they were in Boulder, Colorado, and then they always had you know Welcome to Boulder. They have this sign with the population, and then at the end they're on the uh, the football goal. He's afraid yes. to do it, like hanging on there and stuff like that. They were having so much fun. But you know what I remember so much about the show was really the first season, which mm -hmm. I didn't realize until I did some research. We actually do research on the show, but I always remember you know Conrad Janis being on the show. I remember uh, her grandma Elizabeth Kerr, the... who played uh, Cora. Cora. I again, right, Cora. I remembered that they were always throughout the show, so right. um, they were. But, but they weren't though. Not they were so only, much. They, yeah, go they ahead. weren't no. in it for the second season. They got written out. Yeah, um, which is weird because it's like I thought they were always part of the show because I just remember Conrad Janis and I just remember oh Cora oh you cut it and she'd be picking on him and then he were trying to figure out the dynamic like okay he's Mindy's dad, Mindy McConnell played yes. by the lovely Pam Dauber yes and she had she, the best hair I've ever seen did. well until his show. <laughs> But, and then Conrad Janis, he was a big musician or a fan of, of, of marching band music or something. Yeah, he was, a, he was a conductor. He was having a trombone with him. Yes. Yeah, I was like, they always worked that into the show somehow too. But, and go ahead. I was just going to say, it was a, the first season was a huge success. Um, it was. Know, it was a ratings winner and inexplicably they decided to. Yeah. Uh, I, I think they call it um, is a counter programming where they counter program yeah, move it started, you know against something yeah. else and they did that they got rid of um, grandma and the dad and they said yeah. that um, basically Fred Fred and, and Cora were off um, touring with an orchestra and um, they ditched the record store I, I always loved that record store oh the record store was great too yeah he'd go in they there had and all these see... contemporary records up and right. Like right, that, right 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 and, right 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 um and, and then they bring in jay thomas and his sister to play like this italian guy from new york in a in a up. restaurant in a restaurant yeah i'm like okay i guess and they, they also had tom poston um who i'm uh, yeah he was the new landlord wasn't he mr uh, he was uh yeah no he lived he like, lived um he lived below them and was a great that's it. Like greeting cards and he yes, was just rough and gruff and basically would um uh you know he warmed up as the uh as the season went, but we should point out that um, obviously Mindy knows that um, Mork is from Ork and she decides to keep him, you know. Oh yeah. We didn't get, we didn't do the premise set up. No, no, no. Do you want to, do you want to do that? Yeah. I said, so he comes down from the planet Ork. He's an Orkin and uh, he's there as it to observe the people. And he would report back every week to. Uh, that's right. To Orson. Orson. That's right. Uh, the, the unseen voice. He would just, close his eyes and he how would we yes. do it he'd just do the more Walk, calling, calling orson just, come, come in orson they would and just go to a black there, yes yeah and that was it so i what, why was he sent to spy on the earth for some reason basically what just i think he was just there to observe and to see what the culture is like and and basically that's why he started to well he hooked up not literally yet with um yeah. mindy and um well basically. eventually he would yeah yes well they yeah. Do, they get married and they have a child they have a 
But yeah. basically, Mindy um, said, oh, you can live in the attic. Um, and uh, That's right. He lived in the attic. I remember that, yeah. And it was that, you know, class clash of cultures, really. We're not, you know, yeah. perfect strangers, again. When you think about Balky from Mipos coming yeah. to yeah. America. Yeah, yeah. It's all that, you know, fish out of water story. I suppose. No, there was always some fun stuff in there because I remember like it would usually end with Mork asking Mindy about some kind of human custom or earth yes. custom. I remember they were washing dishes. I always think that every time I put a dish in the dishwasher, I literally do. He's like, why do we wash the dishes before we put them in the dishwasher? Because they were like cleaning off the food, then they put it inside. Yes. And then she was like, oh, because we do this. And then I thought they did an episode where either Cora died or Cora's friend died. No, and it then, was um, it wasn't uh, it wasn't Cora because she um, yeah, she was she came back later on as a sort of a guest. Right. In but, then they did, but she had explained. But they did have um, now who was it? One of the one of the characters did uh, pass away, and one of the yeah. characters actually um had a heart. I think I had a heart attack and died in the shop. Um, and he in the record store. And he wasn't, yeah. he didn't understand the concept of death. death of yeah, what was that was the thing. He was like, what happens here? I remember that. He was always this like naive, like almost like a childlike character. Yeah. And he would just like try, it was almost like Starman, which would come out a couple years later yes. with Jeff Bridges and again, Karen Allen. Allen. Yeah, that's right. But maybe, so, maybe Jane yeah. Carpenter got the idea from that and said, I'll just do a serious chase. It could be. I mean, it was, um, it was a huge success, and a lot of well, it was obviously due to Robin Williams, Robin Williams. Yeah. and his amazing improvisation. If you go onto our uh, YouTube, you can find yeah. some really good outtakes of of Robin Williams um, as Mork and uh, the scenes from it. And what they oh. often would do in the scripts, the script writers would basically just say, um, "Robin does something funny here, or does some improvisation." So there were actually gaps in the script to see what would happen with um and they would just let the cameras roll yeah and and you can often you often know those parts because you have a look at pam dorber or some of the other um, and they're they're trying hard to uh not uh not corpse on yeah. uh, no he was on fire i mean robin williams just took the world with the storm like when that show came on in 78 after the mat oh, mash after the happy days soft pilot and they came on with the full show it just exploded. I mean, everybody yeah. was doing the catchphrase, Nanu, Nanu, and, you know. Jazzbot. And Jazzbot, and you yes. shake their fingers like that, yes. and all that stuff. But the thing of it is, like I said, when I was looking into this, I was amazed how quick that show burned out. I mean, I thought it was on for five or six years. I was stunned to find out it was only on for four years. But then when you start looking at the cast changes, they, I don't know what was going on behind the scenes. Like you said, counter-programming. They could not leave it well enough alone and just say, okay, we got a formula, let's let it stay, because they got rid of the, the old folks. They brought in the Italian uh, brother and sister. They even changed that in the third season. Did, did Thomas Tom Poston get written out? Because he wasn't on for the whole show. Um, I Kingsley. don't think so, but they brought in um, Jim Stahl, who was this Nelson flavor, That's who was like a, a local politician. They, they did have some quirky characters, though. But my favorite happened to be the one played by Robert Donner. Yes. And that was Exodor. And yes. he was like always in robes and like, come with me and all over there. And I don't it was know. It's like that his was prophet. Like... He thought the Venetians yeah, were yeah. after him. And yeah, I don't know if that was like a character he did offset, like, you know, on the stand up routine, like on the nightclub circuit. And he just came on there because he was always like, I don't know if he knew Mork was an alien or he was just so he, out of touch. I think with um, he could he because care. he did know that Mork was an alien, but no one would believe him because um, he was nuts. You know, yeah. He was he was a little bit uh, crazy. He was Back such. Here. He was a really popular side character. He appeared in twenty one episodes. Yeah, um, I thought he was great. I, I, why wasn't he a regular on every week? Because he was <laughs> he was just as crazy as Robin Williams. Robin Williams yeah. would be over the top and. He'd have this like, hey, watch me. So he was a good character. I'm going to say there was a lot of other characters like Corey Feldman, very young Corey Feldman, yes. popped up on that show. And I maybe it was more than one episode, but I remember him being on there and like talking to Mork and learning about like, you know, that he was, I thought he found out that he was an alien or something too. But And, and we also had, uh, there was, I suppose it was Mork's arch ne nemesis from um venus I'm, I'm pretty sure it was venus oh do you know who that was and we only spoke about him in our previous episode about sword and the sorcerer 
Well, it wasn't Lee Horsley. No, it was Joe Regalabuto. Yes. Who was his arch nemesis. Yeah, and he would all go on to Murphy Brown years later too. But yeah, no, he would come on too. And I think they had a big, big like battle, almost like Darth Vader versus Luke Skywalker. Didn't they fight with their fingers? Yes. And they go to, they actually end up, Mindy Mindy ends up going to Orc. You get yes. to see um you get to see Orc. And it, look, the ratings basically it was like number one, you know. Or yeah, it was the first the season. It was and then it was it, huge. Ooh. Yeah. Then they moved it and it moved oh. something to like forty seventh or something like that. Yeah. Then they go, Oh my yeah. god, what have we what have we what done? Did we do? They, yeah. oh, the second season as well, they changed the opening theme. Um, yep. It was the same thing, but they disco fired it to try and yeah. make it a bit younger. And that was another thing too. They wanted to um, try and get that younger audience. And that's why they got rid of the, of the grandfather and the grandmother oh, yeah, okay. to try yeah. and, which was a mistake, obviously. Well, yeah, um, it didn't work. And then they brought them back for season three and it yeah. sort of recovered. It got to like 25 yeah. or 20, I think. And um, for season three and then season four, it ended. Um, yeah. At around 25th, but it never really recovered from that. No, it never did. It's amazing. Season. Well, season four was when it got really weird because they brought in Robin Williams' mentor and his idol in comedy, which was Jonathan Winters, who was yes. around long before Robin Williams. I remember my dad cracking up if we were watching a variety show and yes. Jonathan Winters was on. He would be like on the talk show circus. He was another guy that could just sit there and you would go, oh, you know, here's a pair of glasses. Oh, these glasses. You know, these glasses went up the hill with Teddy Roosevelt and he got shot, but the, the arrow bounced off there and he said, oh, you know what? We're going to use these bifocals from now on. I want everybody to wear them, even if you can't see right. And that's what he did. Yeah. yeah. And he would literally be on TV here, the Jonathan Winters show, and he have a chest and he would open up this chest and he'd just pull out random props. And yeah. depending on what it was, he would just do a whole riff on that. I mean, it'd be a coffee mug. It would be like, you know, a hot water bottle, a dog mm-hmm. dish. And he would just come up with some story out at the top of his head. Yep. And he was a genius for doing that. And Robin Williams admired the hell out of him. So they were like, let's bring these two comedy greats together. However, they did some bizarre Orkin, you know, biology thing where you're born old. Yes. They Benjamin well, Button him before there was Benjamin Button. Yeah. And, and then you uh, end up aging backwards. So he, he was born in an egg, if I recall. Yes. And then it smashed through the egg. You know what's so funny? They did have a lot of tie-in toys. And I know we're going to talk about the merchandise. But I had, I remember this now, the Mork for Mork egg. And inside of it was... It was glue. Uh, like, I think it was like, like glue slime. stuff. Yes. It was like a purple slime. Oh, my God. I can't believe I'm remembering this. And it came with like a little plastic figure. And it was just all gooey. But... They, I hope that was goo, but they, uh, they had that happen when Jonathan Winters was born, but he walked around with his baby, you know, the sound like, Oh, what are we doing father? Oh, I don't know. Ooh. And it was like, I, dis- I remember as a, as a 12 year old, when that yeah. I saw that, I just was not, uh, yeah. it just lost. It put me. you off. It, it was it like, am I supposed to be laughing about this? Or do I feel bad for this guy? Because is, is something not right with him? But yeah. Even that can save. And I got to say, I think what was going on in the outside world, if we can get a little dark, is Robin Williams had a notorious big cocaine problem. A lot of times you see him on that show, he's out of control. And he says after the death of John Belushi in 1982, he said he stopped using cocaine and drugs. I don't know if that ties in to the show's decline because he was like, you know, well, I do, I, look, I think there was probably a lot of factors. Certainly the, the changing of uh, the scene and the, uh, the characters didn't really help and moving yeah. it around, uh, you know, um, Time's good. I, yeah, I think that that didn't really help. I know that he, I did read that Robin Williams was saying that he was, he was, he was a pretty shy person, even though he was yeah. quite a outgoing on stage. Um, he, he started to take cocaine in between takes because he didn't know what to yeah. say to people. So, yeah, yeah. um, you know, so unfortunately, um, it, it didn't sustain its it didn't help quality, anything. Yeah, yeah. but one thing that it did, uh, sustain was the quality of merchandise and oh, God, it yeah. was 
from the from straight out of the gate. So you knew that was. And here, one of my pride and joys from my collection is my Mork and Mindy Mork with talking space pack. Um, I wouldn't yes. recommend pulling my talk. <laughs> Don't go up to someone and go, "Can I pull your talking ring?" Because I think that it's probably not a good thing. But if you have a look, I like how they had. Um, oh, he's upside down. Yeah, he's upside yeah. down. They well, that's how he used to call Orson. He used to be upside down when he so, would. And they used here. to, um, they used to also, um, they had a Mindy doll as well. So oh, on the back here, you can yeah. see some of the merchandise that they that they had. So they had the Mork uh, talking rag doll. Yep. They had Mork from Mork, um, which was I'll do proper uh, pictures here. So Mork Is that Mork. amigo figure. No, these are all from Mattel. Mattel. So, okay. Um, then. Had the Mindy doll, and this is what you were talking about here. Yeah, that's it. That's the egg. I had containing that. orc goo and an orc creature. Correct. That's I had that. Yeah. So they had these wonderful toys. Um, so I'm lucky to have mine box. They did oh, have go ahead, a lunch box. I was gonna say the, okay, let's go. Do they have the lunch box? Yeah, yes, they, had they the did. Board game. Hold on, I'll, I'll, I'll you know what I have to do? I've got to plan this because you know when I put pictures up. I've got to yeah. I've got to have a bit of time so I can put the picture. Oh, all right, all right. And a lunchbox. And a lunchbox. They box. also had a board game. They also Puzzle. had, a, well, they I think they had puzzles, but they had card games as well. Okay. Um, like a like a lot of them did, and they also had trading cards as well. Oh yeah, I've seen the, I still see the trading cards out there now yeah. and then. And there were lots oh. of books as well. So they had um like some novelizations. They had the um Mork's guide um yeah. and they also had uh remember photo novels? Yeah, I remember photo novels. Yeah. Okay, so, so pictures they had a from Mork... the show. Yeah. They would put so people don't know what we're talking about. They would take a book, they take an episode or a movie and they take all the stills from it and assemble it like a storyboard and they would tell the story of the movie with little word captions like a comic yeah. book. So they Star had, um, yeah. The I've got all, I've got all the Star Trek ones. I've got a cap. I've got uh, Close Encounters. I've got um, oh, okay. Can't Stop the Music. And also, um, they did, um, they did one from uh, Mork and Mindy. Mork and Mindy. Now, yeah. he had a comedy album out because I mentioned when we did our Blues Brothers, which you can watch by the way, our Blues Brothers special. That when the Blues Mobile crashes into the mall, they hit a record store, and when they pull out, there's a life size cutout of Robin Williams. And it falls over and i always caught that because another thing robin williams made famous on the show was suspenders like you have on but yes. they were the rainbow suspenders that i think even urkel wore or somebody i do remember those being like oh look those are more whenever you, know, you see i couldn't the i couldn't find one you know what i'm going to do of course as soon as i stop recording i'm yes, going to find i find it. the closest i got to robin williams was um when i was in san francisco yeah. uh near uh fisherman's Wharf. Wharf. Uh, there's yes. a, um, a, what is it? A wax museum. And I've got a picture yep. of me with this very good Mork from Ork. Um, I'm not sure if it's actually Mork from Ork or it could be just Robin Williams, but I'm, I'll am i put a picture up of me with him and I'm going, oh, that's pretty, that looks pretty cool. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, there's lots of merchandise. It's still. Uh, a- I, don't, yeah, I, I don't know if there's a comic book. I do know that it was on Crack Magazine. In fact, I should have got it for the show. I do have a copy of it. Yes. Uh, it's Cracked Magazine. with That was like a Mad Magazine type of thing, like a satire book. I do and have a few Cracked Magazines, cover. yes. Yeah. He, in fact, he was on the cover with, funny, he was on the cover with Superman, Christopher Reeve, because that came out in 1978. And off camera, ironically, was, yeah, he was in theater school with Christopher Reeve, with Superman. That were Rob roommates. Williams was mork eventually is going to be popeye that's another thing that we could talk about briefly and kevin conroy who was the voice of batman they were all in acting class together so you had batman popeye and superman all together at the juilliard school of acting here in and New that's York. why i've got that's why i put that on to remind yes. me that best friends is- actually very good friends in fact when uh christopher reeve had his uh terrible accident and became paralyzed uh, Robin Williams was one of the first people to come to see him. He disguised himself as a doctor and they didn't tell Christopher Reeve and he came in and he pulled the mask down and he just cracked him up and made him laugh yeah. for like the first time since he, uh, he had yeah. his, his troubles, but very good friends with, um, Christopher Reeve. Robin Williams was too. He did. And you know what? I gotta say this. Robin Williams is one of those people that 
he was amazing when he was alive when he was back around you'd go to movies there was two robin william phases i used to notice that when you went to movies if he had a beard on the movie he was going to be in a serious role he was going to yes. be in goodwill hunting or the fisher king or any of those movies Moscow if he did have yeah if he, he Moscow on the hudson that's right if he did not have a beard it was going to be a wacky you know it was going to be patch adams or it's going to be mrs doubtfire or yes. Jumanji, or any of those other movies that he did, or Hook. Ugh. Yes. But anyway, he had a great movie career. Uh, you know, never came back to TV again, though. But just would do these comedy specials, and was a fixture on all the late night talk yes. shows. And he was now, he was just. Do you know? Amazing. Did um did Mork make an appearance in Out of the Blue or Blansky's Beauties? Well, that's what I was going to mention to you earlier. We talked about that. Those are a lot of other spinoffs from Happy Days. Yep. You said Blansky's Beauties, which I don't recall at all. That was with um, Anne Marie, wasn't it? Isn't that uh, the actress? I, I believe it's Anne Marie. Yep. She, she was the, it was like, you know, some stage girls in Broadway that was Howard's cousin or something from the city or Marion's cousin, Mrs. Cunningham, one of those two. But Out of the Blue was after Mork and Minnie. That was about an angel that came down to visit Fonzie and Richie. I think it was just Fonzie saw him. And that was another spinoff show that just didn't work. I, I don't even know if it, I remember watching one episode of it. And yeah. I don't know if it lasted like two or three or they didn't even come back after the pilot. But out of the blue, then there's, of course, there's Laverne and Shirley, yes, which and, did well. And, yeah, and Johnny Loves I, I think Chachi. Johnny Loves um, Chachi. I, I think they almost tried a Lenny and Squiggy one, but I don't think it ever came to fruition there. You know? Well, we've also got to talk about the um, Mork and Mindy cartoon show oh god yeah yeah so that was on had, um, he did the voice for that too he, yes he, yeah he, so did pam dorba so did uh conrad janice um yeah so they brought them back for um i think maybe about 21 episodes yeah everybody um, had a cartoon show even fonzie had a cartoon oh yeah show. well that was part of the uh it was sort of like the fonz and mork and mindy or fonz happy yeah, days and shirley were the now, army and shirley and yeah, army. yeah 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 they yeah, they all have their so, own like sat Saturday morning uh, TV cartoon. Yeah, yeah. So you can um, so you can check those out as well. Um, Where are those on YouTube? I don't think oh, they you can you can released. find them on YouTube. Um, so you've got that. You've got some great merchandise. The they did release they, they, in Australia. They only released strangely the first three seasons. Uh, I think in the United really? States, you've got um, all four seasons as a box set that you can get. I'm sure it's on some streaming somewhere. But yeah. the first season is definitely one to watch because the it first is one's funny. good and then it just falls apart, literally falls apart. The other thing I remember, I, this must have been in season two. It was set at Christmas, and I remember yeah. um, Robin, oh Robin Williams, Mork got um, the remote control. There was a remote control R two D two. Oh, maybe, maybe it was seventy nine. Maybe that was season yeah, two. Yeah, yeah, I remember yeah, yeah. he um, had that remote control R two D two in the. Um, as one of the presents up in his attic. And I always thought, wow. oh, that's cool. Mm. I was always on the lookout for Star Wars toys in, you know, in any TV show, any Star yeah. Wars. Reference. In the background. Yeah. yeah. No, it was, like I said, it was a fun show when it lasted. I remember watching, but I fell off like a lot of people did and just didn't tune in. And then you'd almost groan when you'd go back into it. And you're like, uh, you know, no offense to Jay Thomas and the other people that came on afterwards as the supporting cast. It, it's, I don't know. It just didn't have the same. I don't know. I I, I, can't I felt tell like you those two belong more on uh, Laverne and Shirley. Shirley yeah, you it's know like the they, they should have hung out cousin. with Carmine yeah. and those guys. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, but uh, I, I don't know what how you mess that formula up. You know, the fish out of water type of yeah. thing. But it, it just it just imploded on itself. And when they created the whole like you know mythology about the Orkins and the bad guy, it just it became two Saturday morning kids TV shows type of stuff, yep. you know? Like, yep. And I think, yeah. um, I suppose by the, look, by the end of that anyway, Robin Williams has gone on to started to make, you know, oh, yeah. Hudson was, I think, 82, wasn't well, Popeye it? Popeye came out and that wasn't that was a 80. Big hit. Yeah, but that wasn't a big hit, but that was supposed to be his breakout role. Yeah. Um, Moscow and the Hudson maybe was his big movie that brought him out of movie. He, he didn't want to do TV anymore. He was like, yeah. I should be in movies. You know? Yeah. So. That's what happened there. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. So Mork and Mindy, it is a classic. 
if you if you uh, love Happy Days, if you love Laverne and Shirley, you need to you need to get into uh, into Mork and Mindy as well. Surprise! Uh, they have not uh, remade that show yet. They've seemed to remake every other TV show. So a dark. You know what it is? Edgy. You'd have to get a comedian like Robin Williams, and that's you're not going to find that. And you're so not going to find that because he was he was a one in a Googleplex. Yeah. I think. Uh, yeah, he was. Uh, there's never going to yeah, be. Yeah, I think that's the whole thing. That's that's why you don't see a Mork and Mindy uh, remake because you're not going to be able to uh, pull that off. And that's who would true. want to? Imagine that. You'd have constant comparisons to like, oh, you know. And there, like is the a, there is a guy who, now they yeah. did a behind, like a behind the scenes of Mork and Mindy, you know, uh, they did a telemovie. Um, yeah. And they also, there's a short film, a very short film about, him being Robin Williams, I think in the makeup chair, ready to go on. And he does an amazing impersonation of Robin Williams. So check that out if you can. Mitch, where can you check out other episodes of our show, Mitch and Ed's Excellent Adventure? Oh, Ed is easy as, I don't know, putting some rainbow colored suspenders on and you know, drinking water out of a glass with your finger and, you know, going like this. Uh, all you got to do is hit the subscribe <laughs> that button. Seems on the quite, that seems quite, sorry, I caught Yana Wears there. I, that seemed quite complicated. I, you know, well, but uh, all you do is hit the subscribe button on the bottom and you too will be able to go follow our adventures through Orkin and Earthlings and all around the pop culture world for the last 30 or 40 years as we talk about the things we recall, and maybe you do too, here on the Mitch and Ed Show. Hit the notification button too. You'll be notified when we go back down memory lane and hit the like button because Mork would want you to. And that's about that's it, right. Ed. I have nothing that's else. It. I'm going to climb into my <laughs> egg and take off. That's that's what I'm going to do. And, of course, if you've got a memory about uh, Mork and Mindy or fact check us, you know, did we get something wrong or we I'll forgot play. something, please mention it in the comments, as well as if you've got anything we would like, you know, you'd like us to cover, we'd be happy to do so because we've got some really interesting things in the pipeline and we've got lots in our back catalog as well. So that's it. Signing off. I, I know. I feel like we need to do this. I was going to say, off. do we sign off like this? I think so. This yeah. is Ed Dollister. This is Mitch Halleck saying. And we'll see you next time. Manu, manu.